What up, you weirdos? Dave here, and I like knives. Here to talk to you today about the Craftsman LED multi-tool. Uh, heads up, this is a budget offering from Sears that is ow, a direct ripoff of the Fire Talon. Um, so everything that I'm going to say is more or less true about that as well, that multi-tool as well. Uh, just probably in a somewhat lower quality capacity. So just heads up if you're already familiar with that. Spoiler alert, you know how this ends. We have a blade on this baby. Gosh, I love this thing. Of about three inches. Uh, overall length is four and a quarter. Width is one and three quarters. A depth of one inch. And a weight of, uh, the website says 0.4 pounds, uh, so I equate that to about 5 ounces, 5 or 6 ounces. This feels on the heavy side of that, so I personally would say, ew, I personally would say 6 or 7. Uh, we have, as I said earlier, a great blade shape. I don't really like how far this sticks out. Uh, as you can see, that's the handle and the black line behind it is the blade because it is too big for the handles. I, I want this thing as an independent folding knife. Um, this is kind of a reverse tanto style. Uh, and that's, that's, that's my favorite style. That's my favorite blade style. Uh, it, there's no reference to the blade seal. So this is mystery. Uh, I have used this. My dad and I went on an overnight kayaking trip uh, several months ago. I think it was sometime early fall. Uh, and I used this uh, that night in camp to, we had corn on the cob, and I used this to co cut the corn off of the cob. So I can attest to the fact that this is a, this is a good knife, uh, this is a good blade, Nice and long, excellent belly for slicing, and it is sharp enough for sharp enough for corn. A uh, great lock. Look at how much access you have there. Look at the ramp. Look at the cutout. You don't even have to think about it. It's great. Uh, and there's a little sp not spider coat. Their bird that looks like a like a bird hole. Uh, spider Co's budget like daughter company, I think. I'm not entirely sure how that relationship works. Uh, but this is very reminiscent of those access, uh, access thumb holes. And it works excellently. Uh, strangely enough, this thing has a great pouch. Um, it's some kind of nylon, I'm not sure. But it's very rigid, holds its shape well. Good snap on the back. Uh, only one belt loop hole but I mean this is higher quality than than several Ger uh, Gerber pouches that I have um, so much so that I actually use this uh, as a pouch for uh, for a couple for one of my Leathermans I keep them in this pouch and just leave this in my drawer uh, I use this on the job. I said in my Rev review that my Rev was the first real multi-tool that I ever owned. That's not necessarily true. I had actually bought this from Sears about a week earlier. Uh, and gosh, I love how satisfying, how solid that snap is. I want to do it again because I like There we go. The pliers are now engaged. I love this plier head. Uh, that clicking that you hear is the scissors bumping against the blade. We'll get to those in a second. Very strong spring action. Uh, good plier heads. They are anvil style, so they don't get a solid cut on them. But they're definitely, they definitely provide a much neater cut uh, than what the Leatherman Wingman does. I actually like this plier head more than more than uh, my Leathermans. Um, so, so that's good. Satisfactory snap. 
you know it's engaged, it knows it's engaged, makes it a little difficult to disengage it, but just for the warm tinglies that that pa brings into my heart makes that worth it. I know I'm weird, but I like knives. Uh, good scissors. These are somewhat reminiscent in my mind of uh, Gerber's Fisker scissors. The My favorite multi-tool scissors are the Leatherman Wingman. And as you can see, they are just a... L there we go. As you can see, they're just a little bit smaller, just a hair. So uh, they open up, let's see, that's, that's baseline. They open up a little bit more narrow, a little bit easier to actuate. So these, I would say, are good scissors, uh, especially for this price point. Remember, all of this is within a very, very budget package. Uh, these are just slip joint, unfortunately, while that spring is not too terribly strong when using the actual scissors, it's strong enough to keep the scissors popping back up. So when I was using the pliers, the clicking was the blade, which sticks out too far from, in my mind, bumping up against the scissors, whose spring keeps it somewhat limply engaged uh, this was not a problem when I first got it it was only after I think a day or two that the scissors started developing this issue uh, I'm not entirely sure how to fix it but whatever we have there is doo -doo -doo. there is also a carabiner uh, right there this the retention on that is so thin and lame and pathetic that I'm not sure what you can clip this to. But whatever. Oh, you gotta dig your thumb in there. We also have a can opener and a bottle opener and a tiny little nub right there that their their website probably lists as some form of screwdriver. If they do, I laugh at them because that's just that's lame uh it doesn't look to be a very high quality can opener i can't say i haven't used it uh, my favorite can opener is on the gerber mp400 and just visually gauging that against this there's no contest uh that would never be a can opener that i that i go to one of the most interesting thing about this for me is this little lever in the back right there. I hope you can see a little nub there. That is what gives you access to the screwdrivers. Uh, so these are tucked in there. There's no way to pry them out, except by engaging that little lever right there that pops them out. So we have a lame 2D Phillips head, and we have a flat head, neither of which I've ever used. They are both so thin that... I really have no desire to ever use them. Excuse me. My only real point in mentioning them is that's, excuse me, that is an innovative solution that I've never seen before. That lever is actuating a bar down in there that as you push against it, lifts this up, which pushes the screwdrivers out to where they can be, they can be used. Uh, so that, that is an innovative solution. Props to whoever came up with that. I've never seen it before. Uh, it's possible it's been done in a hundred ways. I don't know. This is the first I've ever seen it. Now, the, uh, namesake of this, of this tool, the LED multi-tool, is, are the two LEDs right in there. We have one that is on the blade so that you can see whatever you're cutting in the night. And we have other that would be uh, pointed the direction of the pliers so you can see whatever you're plying in the night. Er, I'm not sure if it's just that this battery is dead for me. Um, the, er, the battery, I can do this. 
you need nails to do this. I don't think I can do this. Whatever. The battery panel is right there uh, tucked in beside the blade. These lights, they were... They were fairly sharp when I first... They were fairly bright when I first got them, but now they are quite dull. Uh, so I don't know if that's just a battery issue that I have. Um, I'm not sure what the deal with that is. But it uses a rubber button right here that is very well guarded by a ring of plastic around it uh, so that you don't accidentally actuate that in your pocket. Um, Sears.com lists this for 20 I could have sworn that I bought this for 15 uh, but apparently not. The Fire Talon, of which this is very heavily influenced, uh, there's an eBay listing of that for $33. Um, I couldn't find the Amazon price. It's not currently listed. Uh, but that is, that's the Craftsman LED multi-tool. It, as far as budget friendliness goes, absolutely worth the 15 I paid for it. Probably worth the 20 that uh, Sears.com listed it for. By the way, Craftsman is just Sears company. Home Depot has Husky, Lowe's has Cobalt, Sears has Craftsman. Just, they're, they're the same thing, just so you know. Uh, so you won't be able to find this in Home Depot or Lowe's or most any place else because it, it's just made by Sears. Craftsman means Sears. Um, so for the price, this is pretty darn solid. Uh, I would say that if you're in need of something i said that the leatherman is a good thing uh to have around if you want to not have to care about your stuff i would say the exact same thing about this except even more so because it is cheaper because it has a bigger blade uh with a blade shape that i actually like more because it has more satisfying uh stronger feeling pliers i would say absolutely the same thing about this if you work uh, if you work on a boat uh, and you're in very humid environments, maybe you're, uh, maybe you're a deep sea fisherman or something, uh, and your stuff tends to get rusted through quickly, uh, absolutely I would suggest this. Um, when this exposes the salt air, when this rusts through, it's only 15 or $20. You can get another one, and the black coating... I'm not sure if this is a paint, an alloy, a DLC. It's probably just a black paint coating. Uh, but it will slow the rust down just a little bit and give it a, give it a little bit better shelf life in your situation. Um, so out of 10 stars, I give this a, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's not, it's not high quality. Absolutely, it is not high quality. But for 15, 20 bucks pretty darn solid in my mind at least uh if you have any questions comments or suggestions please listen below other than that have a great day